I kick us up, yes. I was here yesterday, so. Yes, well, you're going to have to, you know. Suck it. Catch up. Yes. Feed me. Wait, did you say? I didn't hear she said the correct answer. You were too busy being rebellious. It, it is like for friendship. Or she says friendship. for friendship is nihil. Nothing. Nothing. For a friendship is nothing ali or nothing other or nothing else. Unless. Unless. It is. Everyone. And we're going to jump down to the next line and grab consensio. Friendship is nothing else if it is not con the consensio. Well, agreed. The agreement is the noun. Is if it's oh. not the agreement of omnium, oh. law, divinarum, divine, and humanarum rerum, and human, and human things, cum, what? Benevol benevolentia, benevolence, benevolence or kindness, et caritate. Care. <laughs> Caritate is where we get our word charity, but it's unfortunate because typically people think of charity as simply meaning what? Just like a, a giving a free hand up, but there's, there's more to it than that. Charity is self-sacrificial love. It's not amor, which is romantic love. Caritas is self-sacrificial love. So, for him, friendship equals... Agreement of all that is human and divine plus kindness and love. Now, throw that back against some things we were saying yesterday. I think some of the stuff you said would fit right into some of that. But I also think that that's a pretty big claim for friendship. Friendship is the agreement of, of all things divine and human. And that alone, I think, would be pretty good. But added with kindness and love. So let me ask you. All of the relationships that you term as friendships, all the people that you would classify as friends, does the relationship you have with each and every one of those Fit a definition this big? That's kind of usually the way it works. You know, somebody asks questions, question, you answer it. Uh, Mia? I think the kindness part, yeah, because you can't just be friends with someone okay. doing it. Okay, so maybe part of it, but maybe yeah. not all of it. I think if you're like really friends with someone, I don't think the love. Okay. Yeah, not, not quite to that level. see your non-family relationships in some sort of continuum or hierarchy, maybe you wouldn't use these exact same terms of martyr dad, but you see your your relationships in some development like that. Yeah. I think most people do. Oh. Well, I think probably most people do. Uh, certainly you know a lot of people. I don't know that you really call, you may call them friends, but there's a real difference in the people that you would take a call from at 2 a.m., you would go to their house, you would help them with a tragedy, versus casual acquaintances. You know their name, you'd recognize them in the crowd, you'd say hi to them, uh, but they're not necessarily at that, that highest level. Yeah. Okay, well, I mean, either I like you or I don't like you. Unless it's Zoe, in which case everything's a binary, <laughs> one or a zero, I like you, I hate you. That's, there's only two, it's an on-off switch with you. I get that, but that's Zoe. Right. Yeah. Well, for me, from a voice perspective, like, we don't really, you know, love me, like, we show up and we're just not wasting on each other. I think 
that's true, and I, I, I think, oh boy, I think that's absolutely true, uh, or absolutely accurate. Uh, there is a lot of that. Uh, but at the same time, again, I want to tap into your military kind of uh, background. Again, this isn't amor love. This isn't romantic, lovey-dovey, that kind of thing. But I think like the Band of Brothers kind of love fits in, into what he's talking about. Then. So I think you do, you do have some of that. Um, given that, I will say, I, you see these people with, you know, thousand friends on Facebook and whatever, and it's a neat term that Facebook is used. It's impossible to have a thousand friends. I, I would suggest it's probably impossible to have much more than, I don't know, maybe more than five. I'm going to say fewer. Uh, there's a lot of people, again, this is this continuum thing, but you don't have time in your life to give that much to that many different people that you're going to be that, that really, really tight friendly. And again, unless you're Zoe, I mean, most people, you, you don't just hate these other people. You said uh, more than five. But, um, well, I'm saying, I mean, how much time do you have in your life? Do you have time in your life to be that intimately involved? No. And I really, I can say, and really serving and, and, and being there for, uh, you know, 20 people. Well, okay, I don't think you do. Uh, uh, True. That's interesting too. The people who swear in high school, oh, we're going to be best friends forever. We're going to go to college. We're going to be roommates, uh, and this kind of thing. And very often, just like what you said, it doesn't pan out. Life takes a different path. Um, who knows? Maybe 15 years from now, you and Janae might actually be friends. Oh, no. Uh, so, you know, it can go the other direction as well. You know, one could be the positive. Yeah. You, I can write. I, I can't write you even a pass just to roam the building. I can write you a pass to go to the nurse if you think that you would need her there. Okay. Do you have? Are you in cell phone contact with yeah. her? Text her and tell her to meet you at the nurse. Okay. I'll, I'll write you a pass to the nurse.
I'm still trying to find a tie into the deli story. I don't think that there is one. We're talking about TT. Uh, I said that. We were talking about the kid with the Pittsburgh Deli. Pittsburgh Deli. Love you. Oh, she's already over. She already went, yeah. You know what? Just throw away okay, she's thanks, yeah. She, she already went down. If they ask, she um, if they ask, she went down to the nurse, okay. which is where she was going to meet her mom. Okay. Yeah, thanks. All right, and he says, friendship is all this. It's a pretty big statement about friendship. And he says in line three, with sapientia excepta, With sapientia, with wisdom, ex -kepta. In the order of the letters, it's not ex -pec. There you go. With wisdom accepted. In other words, except for wisdom, there is nil nihil. Melius. No, the other one. Better. Nothing better has been datum homini given to man by the dis immortalibus, by the immortal gods. All right, pause there. Does that at all surprise you that a Roman of the first century BC, based on what you know of Roman history and culture, that a Roman of that time period would have made a statement like this? There is no greater gift from the gods, possible exception of wisdom. Did you read this before? I don't know. I, I, we haven't read this passage before. Zoe? Okay, well, they like to make allies, and they can basically classify allies as like friends because friends help you out, right? So, like, you know, they're doing you a kindness by being your ally, and that's like one of the definitions, right? Yeah. Okay, so friendship had to be invented for people to like trick people into thinking that they were friends. So, like, it was really great of the gods to give it to them because then they could trick people into helping them. Otherwise, like, they would get nowhere. So, thank you like a true Roman. What? Don't they? Thank you like a true Roman. Here's the deal. The word you just referred to was Sokius or Sokietas. What's a Sokius? Comrade. Comrade, ally, that sort of Sorcerer? person. Sokietas is simply the relationship you would have with a, an ally or someone like that. That really was the basic idea of friendship until Cicero came along and wrote this. Is that where you get society? This, and certainly where we get society, you bet, an association, things like that. Cicero really expanded that into something a lot closer to what you and I think of uh, as friendship. But what you just described is really what the kind of traditional Roman view had been. Very, very nice. Here's my next question. The people that you think are friends. And now let's go to your your most inner circle. Okay. Do you would you classify your relationship with that person or those people as being a divine gift? Would you ever use that, that, that big a language to describe that relationship? No. In one instance, Nia? Okay. okay. Maybe one, now back to Emerson. Okay. I'll be honest, I think a lot of times we don't because we're, we're sometimes, even when we say they're friends, I think we're kind of casual in our relationships. And maybe we don't treat them as seriously as we should. If you thought of them this way, you certainly would. Yeah. I don't really think of them as like given from the divine, but more of like people who are coming to your life and they say or say, it's not like it's more of an opportunity. Okay, okay. Um, let me ask you this. Thanksgiving was just recently. A lot of people were spending time thinking about gratitude. Maybe you did in your family. Some families will make little lists and share them. Those, all those kinds of traditions people have. If you did any of that, thank you. You may have been grateful for health and grateful for family and so forth. Did friendship pop up on your list? For some of you, and you do get her to say something like that. Oh, well, just as far as like the gift thing, like I feel like the people that I'm friends with now, like they're not the people that I would have been friends with a few years ago. Okay. 
and like I don't know, we're just like very like all my friends are very different from each other. Like, What's different from a few years ago? How you were well, I don't know. It's just like I guess you know. At first, you ha you have like this idea of like the type of people that you want to be friends with, like uh -huh. based on like you know how good they are in school or okay. like stuff like that. And just like everyone's kind of really clicky, but like now the friends that I have, like I don't know, it's just different. Like, okay. Well, maybe it's maybe it's just a maturing thing. Yeah. 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 Sometimes, again, that's kind of younger, and sometimes you mentioned that, Rodney, maybe it is more of a little bit of a middle school thing, and again, there's a maturity issue. Zoe? Okay, so I want to relate this back to my definition of friends okay. earlier, too. prefer bonum wallitudinum. Good health. Good health. It's all about the physical care of their body and I mean, a fitness freak or whatever, but that's what they're focused on. Others prefer potentium. Power. Power. No question. That's true. Others, Caesar, great example. Others prefer honores. Political offices. Yeah, it says honors, but yeah, right. It's in the sense of political offices, right? And multi, he says, many prefer voluptates, pleasures. Look at what is advertised to you and me in terms of TV, radio, internet, print, the circulars. Again, if you've got a big Thanksgiving paper, you look at all the circulars, Black Friday ads and stuff, right? How much that stuff fundamentally? is about satisfying some physical sensation. You want to eat this so it tastes good and you feel better. Put this on your skin because it's going to make you feel better. Wear this because it's going to make you feel it. All those sorts of things. And obviously, a lot of people go for this. He says, now this last one, it's all about pleasures. He says, this is a beloved. Google would have looked it up because it was in your car. This last one is a beloved of wild beasts. Wild beasts. Yes. Okay? You said excellent. I understand there's not necessarily anything wrong with some of that stuff in and of itself, but an animal is concerned with eating. An animal is concerned. Those are characteristics we all share, even just with the base animal world. One of the things that make a human being different, and that's what he's focusing on. He says, people, if you're only concerned with what other animals are concerned with, you know, that's kind of basic stuff. He says, as for the other things, they are caduca et incerta. <coughs> We're talking about wealth and health 
power, political office, those things are caduca et incerta. Uh, fleeting and unstable. Fleeting and unstable. Ask your parents. Do any of them are in the stock market? How fleeting and unstable is money. Ask any politician how fleeting and unstable is elected office and power. And you all, even at your age, have experienced how fleeting and unstable is health. I mean, you can pick up something anywhere, and next thing you know, you're flat on your back and you're out for two or three days with the flu. So all of those other things that people focus on can be very fleeting and unstable. As he says, they have been placed not so much in conciliis nostris, in our plans, in our plans as in the temeritate fortunae, the hand of fortune. as in the chance of fortune. Oh, you think you're planning and taking control of your life, but honestly, whether or not you get elected, that's chance. Whether or not you really do well in business, yeah, there's some things you can control, but at the end of the day, there's a lot of chance involved. Yeah, you can eat the right things to go to the gym, but at the end of the day, if you pick up the flu or not, that's just, again, random chance. So he says, all that stuff is kind of random. We pick it up with the group over here. He says, those who ponent, those who put the summum bonum, the greatest good in virtue, in virtue, he says, well, they do so priclare, and they do so uh, admirably. In fact, he says, this virtus, virtue, both gignit et continent, produces and preserves amicitiam, friendship. And sine virtute, and without virtue, without virtue there is neck amicitia. There is no, there's no friendship in ulo pacto, in any kind of agreement or existence. Let me ask you this. Is that true? Can you explain what virtue is? Well, okay. I think maybe the first thing you've got to say is, I think, I think that's what true. is virtue? Virtue is like your moral character. Moral character? All right. Like if you don't have virtue, then it's okay. not having, possessing virtue is seen as being like not selfish, being selfless, like having compassion and caring, like being in control of your okay. own actions. All right, we're pushing off from Cicero a little bit, but let's use that as an example. And I think, Leah, that's exactly right. You have to define that first. So let's say that virtue is what Reagan said, some kind of moral character. Is moral character necessary for friendship? Does moral character, is that the, 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 the environment that produces friendship and preserves it? And Lauren, we haven't heard from you in yeah. three years, so go ahead. Okay. So, uh, you know what? Shots fired. I won't even call it a shot fired because I agree with you in that. But you know what? When she speaks, she speaks something of You're value. Right. There you go. I can absolutely agree with that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because how are you going to make friends if you don't know what type of a person you are? Like, Ooh. that is where friendships are formed if you meet people with similar beliefs and interests. Oh, and listen to that. If you don't know who you are as a moral character and how you interact with the world, then how are you going to meet up with somebody else? Yeah. Participation points for three years. Participate three years of participation points in that one comment. Boom, 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 boom. Right there. Yes. Oh, Ryan is going to miss Oh! No, no like, Talk I about your agree, shots. I agree Fine. Like, All right. myself, but, like, have you ever met someone who's just such an awful person, but, like, they have friends, and you're like, wow, you're just They are manipulators. Like, I know. For sure. There are bad people who have friends. Like, there are people who are not very good. Okay. And they have friends. I've said it. This is my stock phrase. I've said it mm -hmm. a thousand times. I imagine that Hitler was charming at different parties. Yeah. Really I'm sure the guy had a social life, right? In fact, we've got some video evidence of that. So obviously, you're right. There's bad people that have social interactions with people. Leah? Going off of Rania, um, I kind of agree because there, there's like a thing like fake virtue, you know? Like, you're, like you put up a fake kind of okay. uh, presence in front of people, and then like that's how you're kind of like the bad person, I guess. OK. 
Okay, okay. Emerson? I'm, I might agree with Vanya because, like, even though, like, one of my best friends is actually, like, like no names, but, like, the meanest person ever. You can say Margaret. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, yeah. I still love them. Okay, yeah. okay. All right. All right, Lauren's got to defend her okay. turf. I'm sorry, but you can hate me for being the optimist here and assuming that some people are just naturally decent people. Um, but I do believe there is such thing as like bad virtue. I'm not denying the fact that people are terrible sometimes. Yeah. And again, that's how your virtue connects you to people. If you're just a terrible person, you'll likely attract other terrible people. Yeah. Ooh, okay. Like the Massacre. Okay, so, so, yeah, that's, ooh, right. I like they, that. They that's deep. That yeah. yeah, Patrick. Yeah. Yeah. Virtue is moral, moral change per person, so it's all just a matter of perspective. Which kind of goes back to what Lauren's saying. You could have bad moral, right? You could, you could in your morality, thieving and murder oh. and lying and cheating could be good things. <laughs> Uh, and, and then, like, as long as I mean, you, then you attract other kinds of people, and that's how you get great criminal organizations and, and criminal so from uh, their lives. perspective, maybe what you did was bad. Right, right. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, back over to Zoe. Okay. So, as long as somebody supports your morals, they're going to be your ally, right? Because, like, you're not going to support <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's true. Allies are important. Yeah, all right, all right. So, if you're, like, an ally of somebody whose morals you don't believe, what are you doing? Because the only reason that you would be an ally is to support someone that you believe in. Okay. So obviously they're going to have to have some morals, whether they're like bad or good or whatever. I right? want to move it off of, of the generic and talk again about us. In your relationships, and we'll keep it after and you can answer anything you want to, but I want to throw another question out on the table. Okay. In your relationships, is there some sort of virtue, or as Reagan defined that, maybe some sort of moral character that's necessary, that's foundational to your friendships and relationships? We're not talking abstract and well, whether hit or head friends or not, but 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 in your life. Again, answer that or anything else, Drew. I, uh, I was going to say that like you don't always have to know yourself. Sometimes you find out who you are from being friends with people. Ooh, is that what you're going to say? Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, like, that's an interesting. Like you can realize that you do believe something by someone bringing this up, such as like music taste or like hmm. beliefs. Something you didn't even realize about yourself. Yeah, like if, if you think you like something, but yeah. in the opposite, you just like like that thing so much more than what you can okay. do. Okay, Eric, I will call on you, but she's gonna have a hissy fit if I don't. So, so yeah. Margaret, and then then Eric. I, I would not stab anyone. No, I don't know. I'm not going to say boy. <laughs> but go on, yes. Friendship. Now, whether that's the case for other people's definition of friendship, 
why their morals is a nice way to actually argue from the text and what he actually said. Very, very nice. Now, this last part, uh, I really want to know what you think about this. Group over here, he says quid. Not quo, the quid. What is dulcius? What is sweeter than to habera? To have someone quicum with whom you would audeos dare to loqui to no not use loqui synonym for dicura to whom you would dare to speak omnia as with yourself. Pause there. Whoa. Like Whoa. being yourself. You really think that? Oh. Is there anything better than having somebody else that you can be absolutely yourself with? You can yeah. talk to them as you would, as just as if you were talking to yourself. You don't have to put on a show. You don't have to put on a pretense. You can just be yourself with them. He says, is there anything sweeter? You say no. And I'll say this. I've heard students say this. Um, interestingly enough, I don't think it changes when you're an adult. How much of your day is spent <coughs> needing to be some version of yourself? Yeah. I need to be this way for this teacher or for this set of friends or in this circumstance. And we all talk about you know being yourself, being yourself, but most of the time we're putting. Who are you? Now, for most of us, that act is somehow rooted in who we really are. But still, it's, it's not the full me. It's not the real. You've got to put on a little bit of an act. He says, to have somebody you can just be yourself with? Oh, man, he says, nothing sweeter. In fact, keep going. I want to keep going in this. We won't have plenty of time for comments. He says, he says, how tantus. Yeah, what's that? So. How great, how great would the fructus how great would the fruit or the enjoyment, really fructus is enjoyment, how great would the enjoyment be in prosperis rebus? In prosperous things, in good things, if you did not haberes someone qui who would gaudere in them. Gaudio gaudere? Again, we probably would have had to look it up. I don't know if we've had it like before. Join in. What's that? Join in? No. Isn't that like praise? Or Close. Or if you didn't have someone who would it's rejoice. Oh. If you did not have someone who would rejoice in them, aique ac tu. Equally as you. you. Think about it. When you get good news, you pass the test that you didn't think you were going to pass. And you got it with a way higher grade than you expected. You got the job. You got first chair in the orchestra. Whatever the thing was you were hoping to get, it's natural. It's human. You want to tell somebody. Not for bragging purposes, but you want them to be happy with you. And if friends don't do it, man, that's what family's for. And at least grandma. My grandma will always be happy for you. Right? Right? You know, exactly. Grandma's going to be proud of you no matter what you do. Um, if you pass gas on two, grandma's going to be happy, right? She's always like, all right. Grandma will be like, he says, man, that is great. But then on the other side, he says, it would be difficult to, uh, to ferre adversas. To bear. Adversity. Sine. Opposite of cum. Without someone qui. Would ferret those things. Would feel or bear them even gravius. Greater than yourself. At the same time, when you're going through bad stuff, you don't want someone to go, oh yeah, that's bad, but let me tell you about the time I went through. You don't want that. You don't want that. You want the person who goes, oh, seriously. Oh, that's horrible. And you want that person who feels and bears that right along with you. Now, that is what he's saying is friendship. So, let's push on that a little bit. Do you rejoice with your friends truly, yeah. genuinely, yeah. when they have success? Totally. Yeah. Hope so. Oh, yeah. Do you 
in some manner either grieve or, or, or bear pain along with them if they are going through some bad stuff. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Good. Because that's, that's what he's saying is, that's what real Amakidia is. And I want to come back on that again. How much of all this, and I'm, the reason I'm asking is because for a lot of people it is surprising, but how much of that is surprising to you to hear from any Roman of this era based on what you have learned of Rome so far? Or is it not surprising to you? Mm -hmm. Jasmine? I think it's surprising because, like, you think of Rome, you're thinking about, like, yeah. how, like, brutal they were and, like, how much they cared about, like, breaking down, like, the rest of the world so they could yeah. live it or whatever, but, like, friendship, like, they cared about it. Yes. If this is your only image of Rome, right, the soldier and that, if that's your only image, that's just a part of it. Yeah. It doesn't surprise me that much because I feel like back then they had a much higher standard of, like, honor and morals. Okay. Than we do today. And maybe if yes. you do that, maybe it kind of makes sense that they would, that they would be talking along those they ways. Have, like, things to mess it up. I'm going to go to Zoe and Max over, then I'm going to throw another question out there if you think about it. Does this at all surprise you to be coming from Cicero? Not just Romans in general, but this particular Roman with first off Zoe and Maxwell. Okay, so victory for your ally is also a victory for you because they have more power, they're like doing really well, that means that you're gonna be doing really well because they're backing you up, just saying. Cruella Romana, yes, <laughs> yep. Uh, I'd say that the image of the Roman legionnaire would actually be reinforced in likelihood that they would um, do this because as a militaristic society, they would kind of have the, um, the soldiers would have to um, support one another okay. and bear help bear the losses. Well, and that's kind of along the lines of Zoe, Zoe, what Zoe's saying with your allies and kind of combat. Not you're not foreign allies, but even your brother in arms kind of thing. I feel like what Zoe's saying is like they triumph, so they're stronger, so they can help make you stronger. Gotcha. That's what Zoe's gotcha. saying. What I'm saying is then, like if. A soldier and, and that one of your the soldiers you fight next to finds out his wife died in childbirth. So yeah, okay. Um, that would you would probably they would I would expect them to feel pain for that okay. soldier because they're fighting together. True. Um, well, kind of going back on the whole like do we expect Romans to feel this way? Um, yes and no because like they're still humans and. They may have different morals than we do, but relationships mm -hmm. have, like, the vibe viewing have been pretty much always the same throughout the country. Okay. Like, you have your friends and then you have your family, and they're separate, sometimes they're intertwined, but, like, just the way you treat others, it, like, that like you're friends with, um, especially, like, it's really you don't change as much. Good run. Um, well, I think, like, coming from Cicero, it's kind of surprising. Okay, let's talk like, about that, yeah. Because, like, he's, like, a person in power, and he was a leader, and mm -hmm. a lot of times, um, the people who have that responsibility and have that power, like, they have to be really careful making money because a lot of people just want something from them. Like, you see that a lot with, like, politicians, right. like, even, like, a like, yeah. Sure, sure. But, like, True. So it made a little surprise to come from a man in his position. Uh, Eric? Uh, I think it's, uh, it's what basically what I actually expected of Cicero to say, because especially with the passage we read yesterday about um, like old age and how mm. you should like t uh, okay. uh, honor them and how you should help them. Mm -hmm. How I feel like it's basically tying it to people of the same age as you basically. Okay. Okay, so it comes out of that. Elliot, if you can go ahead and take that, yes. 